Welcome to Catching God. It's a blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. You know, we've been launching a new telecast and speaking to you from Isaiah 48, verse 1 to 7. But we're going to go and talk to you from the book of Psalms. We're going to turn to Psalms 48 and we're going to focus on verse number 8. And we're going to call this and we're going to title it, Have You Not Heard and Have You Not Seen? That is the title of this message. But remember I said this is a created now moment. We spoke from Joshua. We spoke from Exodus. We spoke from John. We spoke from Matthew. We have been speaking to you concerning the very thing that the Lord is laying in our hearts as a, a spokesman of his to deliver this timely prophetic word in these prophetic season to your life and to your soul. As you know, it says in Psalms 48, and by the way, we just spoke to you from John chapter 6, the wind and the shaft of the Holy Spirit is blowing and brewing across the earth and across the nation. Do you know that God is literally going to shut your bones? Because it's a time of purging, a time of cleansing, but it is a time of what? Where God is revolutionizing things. And he's repositioning you. And not only repositioning you, but the glory of God is about to richly bless you. Psalms 48 verse 8. As we have heard, so we have seen. Say that with me. As we have heard, so we have seen. Say it with me. Pat somebody in the back and say, get ready for breakfast at the sea. Pop up your popcorn from Psalms 48 verse 8. As we have heard, we have seen. And there are many people that have with convincing proof and power and revelation saw Jesus Christ walking on, not only on the earth, but even came back and visited them again. Can I tell you what's the first PowerPoint revelation that God gave me just now? Let me tell you what it is. God said to me that there was a man who kept questioning God and quite questioning the disciples whether he was uh, actually him or not. And Jesus says, touch the side of my rib, touch my hand and know this that I am not only him, but you need to have a little bit more faith. <laughs> Who was that? It was Thomas. And the Spirit of God said to me that he's going to remove that Thomas spirit out of you and remove once and for all that doubt and unbelieving spirit and that thing completely out of your heart because he just said to me this, that I said in one of my earlier telecasts that I did a telecast from the book of Ruth called Broken But Determined and then the Lord went on to speak to me recently broken but completely repaired. Your future is being repaired. Your business is being repaired. Your soul is being repaired. Your children is being repaired. And God said something powerful to me just now. Your marriage is being repaired. You've been weeping and crying for God to change your husband or change your wife or for you and I and for you and your wife to come to mutual agreement or understand each other better and to have a greater bonding in the spirit of God. He's going to answer your prayers and he said to me just now a third thing. He's going to open up the womb a woman 
And they're going to conceive, as you heard my telecast before, times of conceiving, times of Hannah, times of Ruth, times of Esther, times of Grandma Lois, times of Anna at the temple. You need to get ready because the Bible says in Psalms 48, verse number 8, as we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lords of Hosts, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Remember the word of God says in Isaiah 55 that his word shall not return void. Whatever God has spoken and declared over your life, I just told you Philippians 1 6. Be confident or have confidence of this that he who begin a good work in you will bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. We talked to you about our last telecast. We talked to you about the, a title called a shaft in the wind and that you needed to get out of your comfort zone and think outside the box and you need to start to sail with the wind of the Holy Spirit which is brewing and an empowering and repositioning to empower great men and women to to come together in one accord for the greatest move of God like never ever seen before and greater than the day of Pentecost because that shaft and that wind that's blowing is nowhere, nowhere, nowhere closer than Acts 2. It's far greater and more powerful and with more exhilarating Velocity. Come on, somebody. Tap someone on the shoulder and tell them Psalms 48, verse number 8. Have you seen? Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you seen? The glory of God says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, it says in verse number 16, God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on the world, and received up in glory. Look what it says. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. God was manifested in the flesh. The word was made flesh. The word became flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the fullness of God's word dwelled in us and it said justified in the spirit seen by angels preached among the Gentiles believed on in the world and received up in glory these are created now moment created now what what you seen and what you heard what you seen and what you heard and what's been declared over your life from Isaiah 48 verse 1 to 7 he said it created new raven word for your soul, for your life in these prophetic seasons. Not something from the beginning or something that was uttered or declared, but something that is tangible, peculiar, and very unique. You see, God says to Joshua, stretch out your spear. The men in 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32, they had a pole and an arrow. I title it a bows and an arrow, feathers in the wings. Can you understand that the title that I'm going to speak to later on in the year is called the pencil sharpener? Jesus, the Messiah, Christ, the living God, the Son of God, is coming again in the second coming of the Lord, where everyone will see him and everyone will hear and hear that. Jesus is back again. Listen to what I'm saying to you very closely. God was manifested, justified, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received on up in glory. Do you know that we're approaching the day of the gathering of the saints? Had a moment where we also see the coming of the mark of the beast and the coming of the Antichrist. Can I say to you that not even a one world government system or this new world order or this global reset 
can stop the word of God from spreading and from believers and apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors declaring the very word of God. When they tried to stop them in the book of Acts, they got bolder and the church grew and the church multiplied from 3,000 to 5,000. And what I'm saying to you is what Psalms 48 verse 8 says. Here's what it says. As we have heard, we have seen. In the city of the Lord hosts and in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. I want to turn to a verse or to a psalm and remind you that even in, even in Psalms 25, David says, Show me your way, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait all day. The problem, some of us, some of you, you wasting your whole day. Your week goes by and you waste days and moments and times and the clock ticks. And you're wasting months and years and they've gone by when you was once first in God's love. And you once loved God and was so deeply devoted to the word. But in Psalms 25, David says, I'll wait for you all day long. The Lord yearns and he longs for those from Isaiah 55 because Isaiah 55 says, Come all who are thirsty. Amen. For the Bible declares in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled with the glory, filled with power, filled with grace, filled with mercy. The righteousness of God in the glory is the power of a living God was manifested, justified, seen by angel, came into the world stage and was taken up in glory. I just want to say to you that your greatest moment it is right now where God is creating a now moment for your life and soul. And the Lord opened my eyes, shook me into the spirit realm, and showed me the waters coming up like a heap and coming up. And God was crossing his children into eternity. You see, the problem is that we need to understand that these are not dying situations, they're a living situation moment for your life and soul. I chalk from Joshua, I chalk from Exodus. What's in your hands? What is in your possession? What is not only just in your possession, but what is more likely that you can do with what's in your hand? And when you utter and when you decree, what you decree and when you utter, utter has the power to reposition you, change you, and the ability to bring you to the fullness of your destiny. Your words are seed, your words are power. And the Lord declared to me just now, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, that on this journey, the Lord said, he's taking you on a journey on the highway of holiness and that your thoughts are not his thoughts your ways are not his ways his ways are greater his thoughts are far, far more perfect and more perfect than your thoughts are ever or ever will be David says in Psalms 25 I'll wait for you all day long and then it says in verse number 8 of Psalms 25 good and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches the sinner in the way, the humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Remember Psalms 59 verse 10. I declare from Psalms 59 verse 10, mercy will come out to meet you. Look, Psalms 59 verse 10 says, 
mercy will come out to meet you. David says, I wait for you all day long. And what you need to know is that the steps of the righteous are ordained of the Lord. But he is speaking and bringing up my spirit in Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leaves me beside still water. He restores my soul for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear not, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Psalms 48 Verse 8, as we have heard, we have seen. God will establish what he, and finish what he said he will do in your life. And whatever ups and downs or downs you're experiencing now, the only thing you're going to experience in this moment called created now, in which I title it from Isaiah 48, verse 1, 7, is elevation season. God elevating your soul, captivating your mind, captivating your heart, captivating everything in you, and shaking you, and shaping you, and molding you, and equipping you, and preparing you for the final battle between good and evil, between the saints and Jezebel and Ahab, dismantling and piercing the very deep part of darkness in this underworld and the hells of hell and marine spirits and spirits period for God is not giving you uh, God is not giving you uh, something that you, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal but mighty pulling down stronghold casting down every imagination let me turn to what it says in Psalms 30 Psalms 30 says, verse number 4, 5, and 6. Sing praises to the Lord, you saints of His, and give Him thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. Always got to give Him thanks. Verse number 5, for His anger is but for only a moment. His favor is for life. You see, I want to look into this camera. And I want to look into the camera and I want to say to every mother and father and every child and every youth pastor, pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle and prophet, I want to tell the entire body of Christ, the favor of God is in your life. And the Lord just utters something so beautiful to me and into my spirit. He said, when Gabriel went to visit Mary, he said these words to Mary. Mary, you are highly favored. My goodness. These are not the seasons that you're dying, but living moment, creative moment. What you heard, what you see. Pat somebody tell them what you heard is what you see. And what you see is what you heard. It's coming back, the second coming of Christ. But there is a move. Shout with me. There is a move coming where Moses said to the Lord, show me your glory. David said, show me the way, Lord. Show me. Teach me the way. Teach me because you are the God. God of my salvation. Moses had something in his head. Moses turns around and says, Lord, you know, I'm a man of eloquent and uh, I have a speech problem. And God goes on to remind Moses, who made the mouth of men? The thing God is saying that for so long he's been declaring and he's been saying to so many of you, it's time to have a little bit more back and backbone. It's time to get bold and be more bold, okay? Because God wants to use you as a spokesman for his glory. Then it says in Psalms 30, His favor is for, you, is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
Listen to Psalms 30. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, verse number seven, by your favor, you have made mountains stand strong. You see, God is about to richly bless you. I want to close with this, and I want us to turn in a time of a created now moment where God is about to establish your soul on the earth, that his word should not return void, that he just said to me and uttered to me and declared to me, Malachi 3.10, he's about, he's opened up the windows, okay, the windows and the floodgates to heaven, that the spirit of God is going to remove the stony heart and put a new, a heart of flesh in you, and the showers of the blessings of God and the soaking of the blessings of God in your life and soul, and from Isaiah 57, verse 14 and 15, humble but revived. Say that with me. Isaiah 57, verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 and 15. Humbled but revived. God is going to humble so many of you. And God is going to cause your spirit to come to a place that he resurrects the greater you. And he revives the very thing that he always intended to do in your life and so vessels of honor jars of clay a glorious glorious bride in a glorious in time army of the Lord with a bow with an arrow with a spear with a spear with a bow and with an arrow let's go to Luke chapter 24 in Luke chapter 24 Jesus is just all of a sudden he's uh, just decide that he's going to get involved in a conversation that's taking place. The problem with some of you that lately your conversation don't even doesn't even involve Jesus. It doesn't even involve God the Father. It doesn't even involve the Holy Ghost. You're talking so, so lopsided and your, your mouth has become so crooked and perverted that you can't even get your words straight. And the Bible talks in James chapter 3 that the tongue has the power to speak utter life or death, but it also has the power to set you on fire and to send you straight to hell. These are times when God is calling for unity and to come into one accord. He's not looking for any branded name or any great preacher or great man of God or some great ministry or some great church or mega church. He's looking, as the Lord declared to me, very clear, audibly right now. Can I tell you what his word, he said to me audibly, his voice? God said, he's looking for the simple so that you can allow him to establish in your soul and your spirit a spirit of simplicity in Christ Jesus. Possessing all things, possessing all the goodness of God, possessing the blessings of God and gold dust and fresh man and overflow and a sevenfold blessing and a fat portion and the unlimited, unlimited gold dust but being humble, having been revived, but being simple for God's glory. Nothing matters to this end time army that God's building. Fame don't matter. Nothing matter. Money doesn't matter. Possession, land, property, house, nothing matters. The only mad thing that matter to God's last army in these last days is people who just want to be glued to him like the modern day prophets of 2021. Now I'm going to share with you from the book of Luke and... In Luke 24, it, it's glorious, and I'm not going to take too long. It says in verse number 13, Now behold, two men, two of them, to say two men or two of them, behold. Oh God, it sounds like John the Baptist saying in John 1, 29. Remember John 1, 29, chapter 1, verse 29. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming. He says, behold, the Lamb of God 
verse number 13 of Luke 24 says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Ema, Amas, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, the perfect number of God. The, you know what? Showtime, God puts you in a place or the distance between you and God to perfection is only within seven mile distance, within reach of getting a hold of a garment like the woman who was subject to bleeding and she has spent all her expenses and she has spent all her money on medication and she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. This is not only a created now moment. This is not just a created now moment or a moment of what you heard or what you see. But it's a moment when God says to the body of Christ and to declare, just stretch out your head. Touch the hem of my garment and you will be made whole. But God just said to me from Mark 9, verse 23, all things are possible to those that believe it. There were two men that were walking in the streets and they were conversating. And as I said, you in these last days, in this COVID-19 global shock, down, God has got a vial open and he's opened the windows of heaven and he wants to conversate with the saints. He wants to conversate with the church and he's asking you to simply come to his feet and start a conversation and a new conversation with the Lord so that he can rekindle your heart and soul and so that he can humble you and then revive once again, to resurrect your journey, which is far greater than the one in the beginning in which you started out. So it says in Luke 24 that they were walking and traveling. And so it was when they conversed. That's why it says in New King James, New King James Version, verse number 15, they were conversing back and forth. There was a thing back and forth. And reason that Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were restrained so that they didn't know him. Can you imagine? <clears throat> the Lord did not allow them, the Father of God himself, did not allow them to see or reveal to them that it was Jesus. You see, sometimes if you're not in the right place, if you're not in the right place, framework of the Holy Spirit and allow him to shape and framework into the framework of who he wants you to become. And if you're not as passionate as you should be or be passionate for him, completely just for him, sometimes you'll be crying out all day and for weeks and for months and years and God will never reveal to you anything. You see here, God God put a, a restraint so that they not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? They were walking and they were deeply saddened in their hearts because Jesus had just been crucified. They didn't understand the power of the resurrection. And they went on to have a conversation with Jesus. And they went on to explain, did you not know? Have you not heard? Have you not seen? Did you not get a glimpse of him, Jesus of Nazareth? And Jesus is just, just playing around and just wanting to sit there and conversate with them to see exactly what they really are made of. Because they have heard the word. They were, can we say they have heard and they have seen. They perhaps were listening to even many times Jesus' sermon or the Sermon on the Mount. They probably walked with Jesus or they probably traveled everywhere to hear the word. 
the problem with so many of you. Remember what the Bible first declares. Be doers of the words and not just hearers of the words. Perhaps what some of you is, you've heard the word, you chase the word, you pursue the word, you have faith in the word, but now you're no longer a chaser. You're no longer hearing the word. You know what God just showed me? That some of you are just flipping your remote control in the living room, not even thinking about going back to your first love or going back to church. And the enemy is simply blowing and knocking out your life or your passion or your love or your fire for God. That is not a good thing. But anyway, I will probably more than likely come back to this chapter at some point because Jesus, Jesus reveals Jesus is walking with them and catches up to them, but God the Father does not reveal to them who Jesus is. And as you and I know, you know the entire story concerning the whole passage. But I will come back and touch on Mark Luke 24, verse 13 to 33, because it is glory, because in verse number 30 of Luke 24, of Luke 24, verse 30, now it came to pass, as he sat at the tables with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then verse 31 says, Then uh, their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from them. He disappeared from them. When did that happen? Remember I said that in 2008, the Lord gave me specific instruction, and he says, I want you to go into the nation and to declare the future. Declare to them my plan and my future plan for the church. And God said to me in 2008 that it was the year of new beginning and the year of biblical restoration. In the year of the plumb line and pillars in the making and seekers and finders. But God was saying to me, go into all the nations and tell pastors and tell fathers and mothers and tell the people in the body of Christ and those in Ephesians 4.11. It's time to break bread daily at home. It's time for men to take back full custody and to take back your home and be the leader and the spiritual leader of your household and break bread with your family and your loved ones. Notice one thing. The eyes were restrained from knowing who Jesus was. But the minute they sat at the table and Jesus broke bread and blessed and gave. He broke, he blessed, he gave. Say it with me. He broke, he blessed, and he gave. Say it with me. He broke, he blessed, and gave. The problem is many of you are broken, but you're blessed. And many of you are not blessed, but he's given you and gave you much more than enough. But he gave you his son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from John 3.16. Would you say that again with me? Say it again with me. He broke, he blessed, and he gave. Meaning you are broken, like Isaiah 57, verse 14 and 15. Broken and contrite. But it is a place where God's dwelling. When, when you are broken and you are contrite like David in Psalm 51. Remember recreate? Remember my the whole thing about this is a created now moment. Psalm 51 was a created now moment. And the life of David we had when he had fallen with Bereshiba and committed adultery. David went straight to God and said, restore this heart. Restore this man. I'm not the same anymore. I'm not the same man. But do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. Look. Jesus broke, blessed, and gave. Let me read it again. Verse number 30 says that, Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, broke and gave. 
He took the bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it. Bless, broke, and gave. Doesn't matter if I say broke, blessed, and gave. In your most broken moment, and in your most darkest moments in life, I want to close this telecast from Psalms 48, verse 8, with this encouraging word over your life. That perhaps you are now living a moment where you're broke. You're broken inside because of things people have done to you. Because of things that probably your church friends have done to you. Or members of your church. You're probably broken because of what a loved one has done to you. You're probably broken because of what your husband has done to you. You're probably broken because of what your wife has done to you. You're probably broken because of what your children said to you. And you're probably broken because of what your children utter into your soul. But can I say to you. You probably are broken because of 2021 and COVID-19 and you don't have any clue whatsoever that it's a created now moment for your life and soul. Broken, blessed, and gave you the bread of life. When I spoke to you from John chapter 6 and I told you that the works of God is this, to believe in the one that he sent. Does Jesus declare in John 6, I am the bread of life. You're probably broken in 2021. You're probably so concerned of your future. You're probably so concerned of because of your finances. You're probably so concerned because you're looking for a way out. And it seems like things are getting worse. But can I say to you, the Spirit of God just declared something to me. There are many, and God says many women, that perhaps will listen to this telecast and you experience or been experiencing or have experienced or in your lifetime migrant headaches. God is going to remove that migrant headache out of you. And can I say this? Not only you're broke, but you need to remember you are forever, ever blessed because the Lord just showed me Psalms 59 verse 10. Mercy will always come out to meet you. And it says in verse 30, he gave. He gave his one and only son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. May the Lord bless you. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and click on that bell button. And remember, as I always say, I catch you on my next telecast of Catch and Go. God bless.